me how I would go about uh, switching out placed units based on uh, some parameter in the pl player controlled character. And uh, my first thought was to use enums. Uh, enums are a data type under blueprints enumeration. And when you make one, uh, like this one here that I called placement type underscore enum, uh, you'll see that you get a really simple editor. You just type in strings, uh, you add new keys, uh, type in strings, and then these are associated in the back end with a uh, simpler data structure that can be interrogated really quickly by the engine and uh, still give you some representative uh, string to read so that you're, you're, you're thinking in terms of uh, a specific property or type or attribute or whatever, but the engine can still operate pretty quickly. Uh, you could, of course, um, use, you know, separate blueprint classes if you wanted to, uh, and even use, you know, extend a, a base class or, or whatever. Um, but enums will get the job done for this thing, so that's what we're going to use. Um, so uh, go ahead. Once you've added uh, the enum type and the properties that you want, or the, the uh, entries that you want to the enum, um, all you need to do is, uh, in the default uh, content examples, uh, the top-down, uh, template. Um, you get a my character blueprint. So we just open that up and add a new variable, v, and name it something like troop type or character type or whatever you want to call it. And then give it a uh, variable type of the placement type underscore enum. And this is the UE preferred way of doing things. You just do underscore and then all caps, whatever the shorthand type of that thing is, so BP for blueprint, enum for enumerations. Uh, and then um, once you do that and compile, you can actually select a, a default troop type for this. And we've only got the two entries, so I'm gonna have my placed entity be a keep when it starts, and then we're gonna switch it to a tower. Uh, all right, and then once you've done that, you're you're pretty much done with the, the my character blueprint, so you can go ahead. Um, and then, for the actual placement type, uh, we just go ahead and create a new blueprint. Uh, I named mine placement BP. Um, and uh, when you open it up, you're going to be looking at an empty graph. And we're going to switch over to the components tab. And then you're going to add a uh, two static mesh items, one for uh, each of the types that you have defined in your enum. Um, and then in the default content, you actually got, uh, I think there's a cone. Yeah, there's a cone and a sphere, shape sphere. Um, you could use those two static meshes uh, to represent two different states of your item. And then the tricky thing is you want to add a sphere item, which is actually just a wireframe volume. Uh, it has no mesh associated with it. And give it a pretty healthy size, bigger than, bigger than your placed unit size, so that uh, you have some range to overlap with the character. Uh, and all you got to do there is just define the sphere radius. I set mine to 320 because I knew that my meshes were 256 and I wanted to have at least 64 game units around them where, uh, where my switch could take place. And then over in the graph, um, uh, when you open it up, you, you do get a construction script by default. And so what we're going to do is during the construction script, and that basically is whatever, whenever you're in the editor, that construction construction script fires. So we're going to actually have it perform the action that switches between the two static mesh items and changes a few other properties uh, right in this construction, construction script. So what that's going to allow us to do is when we switch between any of our types, it automatically updates the editor to reflect what that thing is. Because what we're doing is taking a, what would what would otherwise be you know we would just drag in a static mesh right, and that would be the thing, and that would, they wouldn't be able to change it. So ours can switch between a couple of different types. All right, so I called my function morph, and you can either uh, build it build all your functionality out here in the construction ship, or you can just make a new function and keep things tidy, which is what I did. Um, and then we're also going to add a variable for placement type. And we're gonna make it public so that if anything else needs to interact with it, totally possible. And that'll give us the ability to actually see it on the inspector panel for that item. 
uh, right here under default placement type. And then you just drag that in and say get. And when you drag off of the placement type, you can switch. And for enums, it just defaults to switch on placement type enum. And that gives you these handy little pins that you see here in the pea soup green uh, node panel for keep and tower. Those correspond directly to the two keys we defined in the enumerator. If it is set to tower, we're going to hide the keep mesh, show the tower mesh, and return it. Pretty simple. Doing so is a little tricky because there are a couple of different parameters that we want to set. And because we want it to reflect the change in the editor as well as in game, we need to actually to make two separate method calls. And it is tricky because the hidden in game, the parameter that we want to set, the, or the value of the parameter we want to set is true. And setting visibility, we actually want to set it to false. So that can be a little confusing. And then just to keep things clean, we want to make sure that the nav mesh isn't interfered with in case one of the meshes is larger than the other, which is the case in this particular example. So we want to turn collision off for whatever item we're hiding. And then that way, the nav mesh can update to really just fit exactly whatever the item is that's still visible. And then when we show, we're going to do the inverse. So we're going to set hidden in game to false and set the visibility of that item to true. And then we're going to turn collision on, collision enabled, and then return. And then for the other item, we just do the same thing to the other static mesh item. So we're going to hide the keep mesh in game, set it to visible false so that we don't see it in the editor, and turn the collision off. And then we're going to show the tower. So we're going to set hidden in game to false, set the visibility to true, and turn on collision, and then return. All right, and then we're going to call that in the construction script. So we just drag out from here and say morph, and that'll connect. And then in the event graph, we're actually going to add an event begin play to make sure that everything gets set up properly at the start of the game, when the, when the engine actually kicks on. And we're going to do one more thing to make things a little bit cooler later on. Uh, we're going to add another variable, but this one's going to be private, so we're not going to take the little eyeball. And it's going to basically be a replica of placement type, but we're only going to set the value of the original replacement type when the game starts, so during initialize. <clears throat> and we do that by just dragging out original placement type, saying set, and then dragging this pin to that, and connecting it here. Get rid of that one. And there you go. Pretty simple. And I also had initialize call morph just to make sure that if anything's stuck or whatever, it just automatically resets the visibility. All right, and then the event graph, back to the event graph. When an actor overlaps the item, so we're just going to say event actor begin overlap. And it's going to add that node for us. It's going to pass in an actor. And then we're going to take whatever the value of troop type is from that actor. And we're going to set the local placement type. And then we're going to call morph again, and it's just going to switch it out for us. And I added some debug strings here so that you can see if it's not behaving the way that you expect it to. Maybe that'll give you a little bit of a clue to figure out why. And this little panel right here is actually pretty cool. You can take any actor and cast it to any other type of actor. To my character, right? And then that actually will uh, return either valid, yeah, we were able to cast to that, or invalid, we weren't able to cast to it. And then you just vary your execution chain based on whatever the result of that is. All right, so once you do that, the value set here in this uh, output bin is actually going to be typed as whatever the cast is. So that means we can work with it, just like we if we were inside the player character or the my character blueprint for any public uh, functions or uh, properties, which troop type is, is a public property. So we take the troop type, set it into our local placement type, and call morph. All right, And then when the actor leaves that zone, we want to switch back to whatever it was when the game started. So we do the same thing. We do the, the, the cast check, 
just to make sure that the thing that we're we're looking for is just the my character object. We don't want any other objects to fire the switch. Uh, if you didn't do this, it's very possible that when the game starts, that some other collider in the game is going to overlap and it's going to start switching, and it may never even stop. I'm not really sure. I don't want to try it because I don't want to crash on you. So uh, we basically we just restore the value of the original original placement type, and we set that into the placement type variable, and then call morph. That's it. Do it. And so when we play the game, if we walk around and enter the zone, there we go. It shows the tower. There we go. I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it three more times. One, two, three. Yay! All right, so if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments on the video.